When we look at Christianity, successful Christianity being not just our proximity to God, being our effect on the world because of our proximity with God. That's the balance we all need to find in our lives. I know I need to find that balance because I know the Lord calls me to intimacy with him. The Lord calls you to intimacy with him. But also there's got to be something that comes out of that intimacy with him that makes a difference in the lives of other people. I love the verse that was referred to just now. You know, when I was in prison, you visited me. When I needed food, you fed me. When, when I needed clothes, you clothed me. Jesus was saying the expression of us being with him should be that just as his life improved the lives of others, so our lives improve and make a difference for kingdom's sake in the life of others. And I want to just talk about this moment when Jesus turns up unexpected in the house of his friends. And I'm speaking of Mary and Martha. And I'm going to read to you from Luke 10. Because there's a couple of thoughts that I really think underline or go alongside the testimonies that we just heard concerning the outreaches that are basically saying in their outreaches, help. If you didn't hear the message, it was help. We need more workers, just to clarify. But it says in verse 38 of chapter 10, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he said. Now we know that these were actually relatives of Lazarus and we know that these were friends of Jesus. So Jesus has come into this specific village. He never sent an email beforehand. He never sent a carrier pigeon. He never um, sent a messenger. He almost just appeared unannounced at the house of Mary and Martha. Now, as soon as he comes in, it says that Mary sat down instantly at his feet and listened to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had, had to be made or had to be done. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Can you please tell her to help me? Jesus responds in verse 41. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things. But the only thing that is needed, Mary has chosen what is better. And it will not be taken away from her. Now I want to say straight off of the bat, Jesus wasn't licensing laziness. He was celebrating intimacy. And this was one moment in the lives of his sisters. But the message of this chapter is much bigger for you and me. Jesus turns up at this house, unannounced, knocks the door, comes in, two sisters. One of them instantly sits at the feet of Jesus and begins to listen to his teaching, just enjoys being with him. While the other sister, she's in the kitchen and I just envision her looking through the hatch as she's preparing hummus or falafel or a kebab for Jesus. And she's not happy, not with Jesus, but with Mary. And so she comes out, and in the end, she's at it. She comes out, she says, you right, Jesus? You ready for something to eat? Um, could you think you could have a word with Mary, who's sitting at your feet, doing nothing, while me, Martha, I'm in the kitchen, doing everything, getting the food ready, and if something doesn't happen, I will be doing the washing up afterwards. Because Sister Mary is comfy at your feet. Now Jesus turns around in this instance and he corrects Martha for her busyness, but we can't make that a theology. Otherwise, we'll just have people that are close to Jesus and we won't get anything done on the earth. What this story highlights to me is two different responses to a moment when Jesus visited. The first response was sit. The second response was serve. Neither of these responses are wrong. 
But there's a time and a place and a balance for them both. When I look at Mary and Martha, I could preach this in a comical way, but time doesn't allow. I can just hear attitude all over this. I can see Mary like sitting there like, what else do you want to say, Lord? And Martha just scrubbing the pots like, Until she can't take it anymore. And she says, do you think you could budge Sister Mary, Jesus? Now what we see in these two ladies are two attitudes that can be present in us as a group of people and in us as individual people. There's two attitudes represented. The first is devotional. It's one of being devotional. I just want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in... She was having a lovely moment. But it was also servitude. Or a person that knew sitting at the feet of Jesus is nice, but it doesn't get the food ready. It doesn't get the guests taken care of. Because Jesus wasn't alone. He brought his whole team. That's like if... The Elmses descend on you. You don't get me and Gina. You get me and Gina, and when Ethan's home, five kids. I mean, suddenly, that's a lot of food. That's a lot of washing up. Jesus turns up with his disciples. Mary takes the position of devotion, while Martha takes the position of servitude. Now, stay with me. The two were never meant to contend in fact, one was meant to cause the flow of the other. But when a person sits with intimacy with Christ, the natural or the normal expression of that is you catch his heartbeat. You catch his heartbeat. And his heart is always for the well-being, specifically the saving of the soul of others. So to me, a moment of intimacy that we may have on Sunday morning should naturally produce in us a bit of Martha. But we say, Lord, what can we do for you now to make your dreams come true on the earth? To me, we can't make this one moment the be-all and the end-all of the theology of who's right, Mary and Martha. We need to look at their wider life and say, we need Mary's. And we need Marthas. In family church, we need people that need to be merry. We need people to be finding closer proximity or devotion to God. But we also need people to roll their sleeves up. We need people to get on team. We need people to come to set up. We need people to be at breakdown. We need people to be at the homeless outreach. We need people to be at the community outreaches. We need people to be on the worship team. We need people to be on the sound team. We need people to be on the Javelicious team. We need people to be on the, on the bookshop team. We need the people on the car park team. We need, we need, we need, we need. What I'm saying is if everybody's merry, we're going to have a beautiful time, but in a building with no chairs. And no equipment. And you're going to crash your cars because Don's not out there. We need to understand that there's a place for Mary. Every one of us should have Mary in us. A hungering for devotion with him. But equally, we also need Martha in us. As a group of people. But also as individuals. Does that make sense? Now, Mary represents someone that just wants to sit at his feet all day or night. That's all they want to do. Martha represents someone that's a doer. And often if you interview Martha, she would actually say, Oh, I would like to sit at his feet all day as well. But if I sit at his feet all day, ain't no one going to get anything done. And the Lord also needs faithfulness in service, not just intimacy of proximity. It's a good word, this, eh? Now, it's not an issue of either or, but it's an issue of both. Here was one of the key thoughts that came to me when I was praying this morning. If both groups, the Marys and the Marthas, are committed to being both, Marys and Marthas, then both groups can enjoy being both. But if everybody just is a Mary, the few that are the Martha will never get a chance to be a Mary 
because there's stuff that needs to be done. Equally, if we just become Marthas that we're doers, we're doers, we're doers, we're going to lose the heartbeat of what we're doing and why we're doing it or who we're doing it for. So this is a spur of the moment. But in the continual, I think the Lord would actually say, Martha, you're missing a very important moment of intimacy. But in the bigger scheme of things, now I don't want to put words in Jesus' mouth, but in the bigger scheme of things, I think he would say, in the bigger plan, O Mary, you do need to get up and do something. You can't sit there. I know you're loving it, Mary. Love you much. But you also need to have a bit of you, Mary, that gets in the kitchen and helps Martha. Because otherwise, Martha's never going to have time to come and sit at my feet. I would have loved to have seen that conversation go in a number of directions. So we need to understand, in a group setting like us, Mary's represented by some, Martha's represented by others. And what we're saying to some people that are more like Mary is, all right, glad you're enjoying intimacy with Jesus, but could you roll your sleeves up a bit? But also what we're saying to Martha is, listen, you're not a human doing. You're a human being. And God wants some more special time with you. So actually, no one's getting corrected. We're all getting rebalanced. Because in us all, we're all prone to one or the other. If I was to put a chart up today, and at one side was Mary, absolute. On the other side was Martha, absolute. And there was this little kind of chart in between with a halfway mark. Say this was the halfway mark. Mary's over there. Martha's over there. Very few of us would say, I am extreme Martha. or I am extreme Mary. We'd all say, I'm somewhere on that chart. And we'd locate that maybe you are closer to Mary than what you are Martha. Or maybe for the person next to you, they'd say, well, actually, I'm closer to Martha than I am to being Mary. I'm closer to doing rather than being. Now, what we've got to do is look at our lives individually and say, well, actually, we're not called to one or the other. We're called to find a balance between the two, which means, firstly, we need to locate our wiring. Does that make sense? And I don't think anyone really needs any help with that. Because you know in your heart, if serving is the extreme of Martha, and just being with him is the extreme of Mary, in a seven-day week, which one is easier for you to do? If you're a Mary, give me a wife. Three of you. That's amazing, isn't it? Well, we'd be getting a lot more work done if it was only three people being Mary. I can say that straight off the cuff. Come on, join in with me. Who loves to be more? I just want to sit at his feet. Come on, give me a wife. That's it. No one's going to get shot. There's no lasers. How many people are, well, I'm more of a Martha. I'm more of a doer. Give me a wife. And how about the rest of you? I didn't see a third category. Or are you a perfect example of a perfect blend? Come on, we've got to locate. It's all right. There's no wrong answer. It's the way God wires us. Some people are more like Mary. Others are more like Martha. What we've got to do is locate what we are and then say, come on, let me now bring some balance to it. So if you say, well, actually, I'm more of a Martha, praise God, we're glad you're Martha. Believe me, we need more Marthas. This morning, the setup team needed more Marthas. But what we're saying is don't go crazy and suddenly not pick up another speaker and go, I just want to sit at his feet, look into his beautiful eyes. We're saying just nudge over a little bit. Or if you're somebody that just wants intimacy with God, to the degree that you're saying, I don't care what's going on in the world. I just need my time with Jesus. You're selfish. I don't know how to break that to you. Because there's a world that's dying and going to hell. Well, no, no, I just want to sit with my head on his chest. Well, if you have located yourself to be with your head on his chest, you must be hearing his heartbeat. Do you know what his heartbeat is? 
souls, 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 souls. That's the heartbeat of Jesus. So when we come into greater intimacy with him, we hear his heartbeat louder, souls, which means we start to say, how can we reach souls? How can the practical things we do mean that people can find Jesus? Now, your homework is to draw a little chart. Mary, Martha, line in the middle. Locate yourself. No cheating at your husband's notes. This is for you. And then ask yourself, how can I just nudge along two or three notches to bring balance to my life? Because to me, when I walk around with family church folk, it's amazing. If they asked me, I could probably tell them which one they were gearing towards. But they won't because some people will be offended if they ask me that. But it's like I hang out with some people and I'm like, you're such a Martha. And the church is so grateful that you're a Martha. The kingdom's so grateful that you're a Martha. But can I be honest? You need to build a little bit more on spending time with Jesus on your own. That's what your life needs, just to bring you just to a better balance. Again, I can hang out with people and I could say, wow, you spend a lot of time with Jesus, don't you? Wow, that's beautiful. Can I encourage you just to spend a little bit more time practically doing something that makes the house of Jesus work better? Because then what you'll do is, you won't go like that. You'll just bring a little bit of balance. When I look at my life, I want to make my target in the middle. But I, there's enough of Mary of me to please Jesus, and there's enough of Martha of me to get what is on the heart of Jesus active in the world. Okay, a couple of thoughts, and then we'll round this off. It's about understanding that Mary is about being, Martha is about doing. Doing isn't works because works are things you do to get saved. No, no, doing like Martha is the fruit of you knowing you're saved. It's the produce of you knowing what Jesus has done in your life. Now Martha represents doing. Mary represents being. What does Jesus want from each of us? I honestly believe he wants a correct measure of being that produces doing. Don't let anyone in family church ever do anything to get saved. Because if you've believed in Jesus, you already are. Don't let anyone in family church ever do anything to make God love them more. Because nothing you can do can make him love you any more than what he's done and he demonstrated in giving his son to die on a cross for you. No, the doing of our life, the extra Martha in our life should be the produce of us knowing what he's done for us. Now, when Jesus told Martha off, like I said, it wasn't a license for laziness. It was that moment at hand. Now, bear in mind, Jesus knew he was on the way to the cross. Jesus had just sent out the 70. If you read back in chapter 10, what happened directly before this to give us true context, Jesus had sent out 70 people. He said, go and do, cast out devils, heal the sick. The 70 had come back rejoicing at what they'd seen. Now, straight off of this message of sending people to do, we have this message of Jesus saying to Martha, you need to know how to have proximity or intimacy with me like your sister. But we get out of balance if we suddenly build our theology of existing for God on this one moment, when actually, like I said, one should naturally flow in to the other. When you look for verses in the Bible to back up either camp, you can actually find verses 
to back either camp. If you want to say today, I'm a Martha, the Lord's called me to be a Martha. It's all about being a Martha. It's in the doing. You can find verses, and I'll give you one in a moment, to back that. But we should never build upon our lives upon single verses. But rather on the manifold wisdom of God. Equally, if somebody says, hey, I'm Mary, I've got verses that license me to be Mary. I can show you verses that say, you must dedicate your life to being like Mary. Again, my answer is, well, I can show you verses that Jesus calls you to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. And I want to leave you with two of these examples. Not that you could be confused, but you could be inspired. Like I said today, this is self-analysis time. This is the moment no one's judging you, no one's pointing a finger at you. You're pointing a finger at you. And you're asking yourself an honest question. If Mary is there and Martha, I know during my message they've swapped places about eight times, haven't they? I should have put a sign on the speaker. I'll do that for the next service. Now who was here? Mary there, Martha there. And this is the middle block that says you have equal amount. Where today would your life be positioned? I don't think anyone here is like that. But there's a few that are here or here. I don't think anyone's like that. Some of the guys on the setup team come close the way they work. I'm like, you should get a Martha Award, some of you guys. But they're only working hard because there's not enough team. Are they here? Are they here? It's an interesting chart, isn't it? Now, what I'm saying today is wherever you locate yourself, why don't you nudge yourself in the opposite direction? But if you fall on Mary's side, aim your life towards Martha. If you find yourself on Martha's side, then aim yourself at Mary. What's our common objective? To all end up as close to the middle as we can. Because in that position, we'll have both. We'll have devotion and we'll have servitude. We'll have input and we'll have output. We'll be refreshed by Jesus and we'll be changing the world. Two verses to finish. This is a verse that backs up Mary's side of things. Matthew 7, verses 22 to 23. Could we just pop those up? Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not do, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, perform many miracles in your name? Then I will tell them plainly, away from me, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Oh, well, there you go, Andy. I can't be doing, I've got to be knowing. It's all about me knowing. It's in the knowing. Yeah, but the problem is that Jesus also taught other verses, like Matthew 25, 23. And his master replied to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. Now I'm going to put you in charge of many things. Oh, and all the Marthas go, well, there you go, Mary. There's the verse I was talking about. And Mary looks back at Martha and says, yeah, but it's not about doing for him. It's about knowing him. Well, let's stop arguing and let's meet in the middle. And let's say, come on, let the Marys become more like Martha. And let the Marthas become more like Mary. And if we can get that right, we'll have a church and we'll be a people that have intimacy with God. But also, our lives will be doing the things he's called us and asked us to do. Is that a good word? Again, I ain't pointing my finger at anyone. I'm pointing my finger at myself. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus, here's the good news. Just like he came to the house of Mary and Martha. Isn't that a beautiful picture of Jesus? I love that. He wasn't in a temple on a stage going, 
tell them to come and see me. He said, I'm going to go and visit my friends, Mary and Martha. Just keep your attention this way on me. Jesus said, I'm going to go and visit the house of Mary and Martha. I love that because priests of the day wouldn't have done that. Roman emperors of the day wouldn't have done that. Superstar preachers of the day wouldn't have done that. But you've got to understand, that's what Jesus does. That's what Jesus does. Just keep your attention on me. That's what Jesus does. Now, if you're here today and you've never received Jesus into the home of your life, that's your decision. If somebody knocks my door tomorrow morning, I'm expecting the gas man to come and fix my boiler, so I hope he comes and knocks my door. But I have a choice whether I let him in to my house, right? It's the same with Jesus into your life. He says, I stand at the door and I knock. Anyone who opens the door, I will come in and I will be with them. 